I've had a really interesting last year and a half. Um, before that, I, uh, I was a spiritual teacher. I taught a course in miracles and I studied it for a number of years and uh, was doing healings. And I was relatively happy living a fairly quiet life. Uh, but I was a little obsessed with the psychic world. And uh, I was asking for guidance in every little thing, which is of course says to do, but I, I wanted to know about things that uh, would have better been left, you know, uh, unknown perhaps. Anyway, I was struck one day with a very strange illness. Uh, I was taken over by voices and uh, basically became a channel through person, which is almost a joke because the Course talks about, you know, and other teachings talk about you know, enlightenment, you know, non volitional lifestyle and everything happens by itself. And, and here I was having someone speak through me and take my body wherever it needed to go. And I had no choice whatsoever for about six months. And uh, it started out kind of fun strange but I'm not too painful but I slowly ran my life to the ground until everybody was gone except for high school rats and, uh, <laughs> and I was in Southern California and then I was hit with I was told the voices would go away at a particular time and they did and then I was hit with an anxiety and depressive disorder which I'm still struggling with and I was brought up here because I couldn't function and really everything ended but not in a blissful way. Um, I did uh, still trying, I've been very close to suicide. I've been in the hospital a couple of times since I've been up here recently. And uh, I just had a good week, but I'm heading into a rough period, which I know when they come. And uh, so I just, it's, it's really ironic because uh, I was, thought I was living a spiritual life and uh, I don't really know how to continue living like you and now I'm in a highly anxious state and it's really surreal and things seem unreal to me and I've been given all kinds of psychotropic drugs <laughs> and I never took any drugs before. Everything, my, everything I believed in has just crashed. All my belief systems were crashed. All my faith was crashed in every way. So, um, I guess I'm wanting to, it's very hard for me to live in this moment because it's very uncomfortable. Uh, the last few days were good, but it's not comfortable now. And it's just really anxious or really depressed or really painful. And I uh, don't really know how to live with it in the present moment. Um, I do a lot of chanting and that sometimes helps me break through. And sometimes I can feel that subtle place where the ego is resisting going into the light, um, but honestly, I, you know, just don't know how to live with it. And I'm going to everyone under the sun to help it get better. But uh, so, if you have anything to comment about that, be um, nice to hear. Yes, thank you for sharing that. Uh, it sounds like you're. You're going down, down, down into the line. That's, that's how this goes for everyone sooner or later, seemingly. And uh, the personal perspective is the ego. It's, it's hell being a person. It's, it's hell being a spiritual person uh, because it's you know, still like, it's still the ego's lens um, when you're looking through the personal perspective, even the, the spiritual personal perspective. <laughs> it starts to be intolerable after a while because it's just not natural. It's, there's, a, there's an expansive state in the present moment that is just no limits whatsoever. No personal construct uh, whatsoever. I used to be able to experience that. Yeah, that, that's great. You had these glimmers. That's probably what has drawn you on <laughs> kept you going. It's those glimmers that, that where it's like you see a huge vista that opens up where your mind is so so vast and so expansive that you think, ah, this is it, this is natural, and then uh, something seems to cover it over. And uh, so I've talked for many years, about 12 years on uh, on letting go of uh, personhood, um, 
in the end, that's why that people that can get on this journey you know, will start to go downward. But it's like once they start to see the ego starts to think, wait a minute, that's that's the annihilation <laughs> because the ego believes that it is a person, and to it, it thinks of spiritual awakening as uh, death or annihilation. I remember uh, here we are in the Pacific Northwest, and there's Linda Carver there with Tom and then uh, Paul Tuttle and Susan. I remember Raj talking one time that Paul was getting very nervous about this very thing of where is this all leading? I mean, all those years of Christian science and channeling Raj and it's really, my God, what, what is going to happen? And basically saying, what's going to happen to me and what's going to happen to Susan and what's going to happen to Chris, you know, and going down the line, my family members and this and this. And uh, Raj said, uh, Paul, I'm here. You're here. They're here. <laughs> here being heaven. <laughs> We're all here. <laughs> There's no, don't worry about losing anything or leaving anything behind. We're all here. And there is no there. <laughs> it's all here. I had another uh, a friend who had kind of a mystical experience like that one day uh, where she was laying in his bed and uh, went over to a prison. Like a prison. <laughs> Like, no movement whatsoever. And uh, later on, she came downstairs and she just was like saying, she said, There is no here. I was just in absolute oneness. And then I